Up ahead, the sea looks distinctly rougher, and um, so I have great hopes, as I always say when I see rougher seas ahead. Yeah. Um, one of the major things you've got to learn is how to read the sea, um, and obviously rougher sea means a little bit more wind, smoother seas don't. Uh, when you're up in upwellings, uh, upwellings are slower water, whereas the... Um, the ruffles tend to be quicker. Ruffles seem yeah. to be quicker. But one of the many, many things that you've got to learn. I reckon we're three, four boat lengths back from this rougher water. Okay, let's see what's going to happen. Yeah, <laughs> stand by the main sheet, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can just see it, the bow's about to go. Are you you're checking the speed? Right, we're 4.3 at the moment. 4.3, we're just entering the rougher water as we I can feel that. I can yeah. feel the increase in wind. So, as Beverly's predicted, increase in wind. Be a little bit while. Now, it takes a, a little while. It takes a little while for a boat like Salty Nast to accelerate because we've got her laden down with tons of stuff. Um. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing she's a bit shy on yeah, is water we... at the moment, which is why we're going to table it. But we went up another quarter of a knot. We were doing four and a half there. Okay. So. Not a huge room increase in speed, but uh, take everything you can. <laughs> yeah. 4.6. So 0 0.3 of a knot, just by a slight change in the water. Well, yeah. obviously it's the wind that's showing right, on you're, the water. You're, you're making my editing life hell nice, so stop windmilling. <laughs> When you're sailing, um, you've got to be prepared for making a multitude of small adjustments. So initially, uh, we were on, we were close hold. Um, so we were using the traveller um, to get the sail, the main sail in the right position. Uh, but we've now, the wind has shifted, and we're now on a close reach which is the position from a beam reach, which is right on the side, to in between a close haul and a beam reach, isn't it, Bev? Yeah. So, um, uh, because of that, we've bagged the, say, the Genoa a little bit more, and um, we've just altered the main a little bit. And the idea is that you want the leading edge of both seals to be facing exactly into the wind. If you imagine there was like a stick on the leading edge of the sail pointing to where the wind is, you want it straight into the wind because in this sort of configuration you want the air flowing over both sides of the sails so that it acts aerodynamically like a wing because when you're close hauled or close reach they are acting as wings pulling you forward. Um, the wind isn't pushing the boat, the wind is pulling the boat. One of those things, <laughs> the joys of physics. <laughs> I think we've uh, done quite a few points of sail on this uh, particular journey because uh, we're now on what's called a training run um, which is uh, the wind not directly behind you but um, slightly off in our case to the starboard side and we have got both sails out and we are goose swinging. Yep. But Beverly is going to go and fit a preventer on 
uh, because it's just an awful lot safer if we do do so. We are going up Loch Sween at uh, an incredibly slow rate of knots. What is it, Bev? Three and a half. Three point five knots. And uh, Beverly and I were just talking about the fact that if you do want to or consider buying a sailboat, you've got to realise that going slow at three and a half knots <laughs> is your new normal. If you need to be getting somewhere or you know a bit faster than three and a half knots then sailing isn't for you um, and um, but I love sailing because I don't mind going slow I don't mind just taking the slow road so that's why sailing is good for us um, you love it as well, don't you, Ben? I do indeed. Yeah. Well, but... we fitted a preventer to the uh, boom because we got the we got the main fully out. Mm. So part of the excitement is hoping that the boom doesn't flip over as the wind gets behind me. But that's why we've got the preventer on. We did um, pole out, but <laughs> and I was there standing with that. But it's not something that's tenable, is it, Bev? Only, so, for a short only for a short time. So for a short period of time we can um, do that but it wasn't really working and um, we might have to uh, remedy that and get ourselves a boom um, hoist or something like that. Spinnaker for you that thing. Oh, How yeah. long have you been in the boat? I mean it is you could support and starboard right some days. Okay, we need a spinnaker pole. Beverly and I are having lots of fun in Loch Sween. Beverly's fun is dodging pots, isn't it, Beth? Totally. Because we're determined to be a sailboat. For as much as possible. Yep. Um, but that does mean that we are dodging the numerous amount of pots that are here. Um, but yeah, okay, it's slow. Oh, it's so, so beautifully peaceful but I've got plenty of jiving practice in so I'm happy enough with that <laughs>
Well, Beverly and I are at Tavelick, an absolutely beautiful little place. Um, and we came here primarily for water because unlike um, Gia, where the water's, it says it has water, but it's quite inaccessible. Here, um, all this pontoon is about four or five meters uh, depth and we have water, yay! <laughs> The only uh, issue you have though is um, just at the end, um, that is used for the Jura Ferry. Uh, so do look it up because there's only two sailings a day. So if you just want water, which is what we and Beverly want, uh, you can come in, get your water and then leave as long as you do not get in the Jura Ferry's way. We did want to go and get the water last night, but uh, with the odd parking around here, it was a bit difficult and we didn't know that the Jura Ferry had already left for the day, so we could have come in where he was. But yeah, there's uh, just a bit of odd parking and lots and lots of dinghies. 